Kathy here with another edition of Mixed Media Frenzy. Um, this is the sketch we are all working from this week, and I'll kind of quickly give you a, a, a review of the things that I'm uh, noticing about it. Uh, there's some splooshy mixed media up in here and a scalloped um, uh, paper uh, border strip here and a frame with some hearts and a, and a bow. We're not going to go with hearts because I'm actually going to do a Christmas layout. And this is maybe my, f well, no, it's my second. Uh, I, I just did one yesterday, a, a mixed media Christmas layout. But I, I'm kind of, uh, this one's going to be strange because I'm doing it on uh, colored, textured, cardstock. This is, let's see what the color is. It is um, beeswax and it's from um, Basil and it came in my um, Mind the Scrap uh, November kit, I think. And it's it seems sturdy and I'm not gonna really do a lot of wet stuff on here but I do hope to get it wet enough for there to be some drips so we'll see how how well that works and my trick <laughs> is I actually have some um, uh, stencils that do drips so I could maybe maybe do that um, there are a couple pieces of paper here. They don't look like um, patterned paper. I'm actually going to cut those strips. I'm using everything I use on this page is going to come from this one uh, pattern paper. It, it has a, a hole in the top, so I'm going to conclude from that that it came from a paper pad. I've had it for many years, and it has little... Uh, uh, words and, and letters kind of strewn uh, across the sky here, and that sky um, kind of periwinkle-ish blue is similar to, let me see if I can find my photo. Um, that would be drastic if I lost my photo, and I appear to have lost my photo. Did I drop it on the floor? I did. Okay, so the jacket that I'm wearing in this photo is a um, kind of a periwinkle blue, and there's some periwinkle blue in Katie's little um, little onesies. Or um, this was her first Christmas. What do uh, eight-month-old babies wear? I forget what those are. little stretchy things that go over her diaper. Uh, how quickly we forget. Okay, so I've done my matching as far as color goes. I'm going, I have already fussy cut this tree, which is going to go kind of over here in place of some of this mixed media. I'm kind of going to run it like that. And then I'm going to overlap the title cluster. I have already mounted my... Um, photo on white cardstock and I'm rounding the corners now. I've um, inked the edges of the photo with my kind of standard antiquing ink, which is um, gathered twigs, distress oxide. So I think there's probably enough on there for me to ink the um, the white paper. As you notice, the even the white um, snowmen on here kind of have uh, ink, look like they have inked edges. The trees are made of uh, strips of newsprint. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip the newsprint in these two areas. I've got several different ways I do newsprint. And in this case, uh, the way I'm going to do it is to not do it because I'm adding in these Christmas elements and I really don't want it to be too busy. Okay, so that's what's going to go for the photo. I'm going to put that aside. 
I think I'll go ahead and cut, because these words are facing all kinds of different directions, I'm gonna cut my strips kind of this way. And I may use one or more. I think I'm just gonna fussy cut the little uh, tree there. I'll do this, and I'm gonna kinda do a, an angle cut there, and I will do a, another angle cut in kinda the same place. And I'm not gonna worry about whether it's the same angle, and it isn't, I'm sure. So I can do something like that. Actually, let me do, we'll see. We'll see what I end up doing. But the very next thing I'm gonna do is uh, ink those edges because I think that's what's being indicated in the, in the sketch. And I kinda wanna go with that uh, distressed look. It will tie, in my mind, my silly mind, it will tie the, um, the blue and the other Christmassy colors in with this kind of mustardy, um, beeswax colored uh, cardstock. So these are slightly different widths and let me see what I'm doing here. Okay, I'm gonna put the, dis the distress oxide off to the side. I'm gonna kind of line these things up. That seems to work for me. Um, and I'm gonna let them be a little longer than they are in the, in the example because my photo's a little, going to be a little wider. My photo cluster's gonna be a little bit wider. And I have this tree over here that's kind of, you know, if it were shorter, it would be, I would have trouble not, not making it the exact size of that tree. Okay, so that's kind of where that's gonna be placed, and I will have a little bit of mixed media kind of in this area. Um, and up here at the top of that pattern paper was this strip, and I'm going to distress it now that I think about it. It's kind of a um, newsprint um, rickrack sort of piece. I'm not going to scallop it. I'm going to do this with it, and then I may work in um, this branding strip from there, maybe see if, see if it works to build a little cluster there. Another thing I'm going to use is I die cut this little uh, frame for a Christmas card, um, I think last year. And it's kind of gray wood grain. And, and I'm thinking it needs to be more, uh, have more of the, the brown color. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink it as well. Not changing the whole thing, but clearly distressing it. And I'm gonna use, if you'll notice in the original, there's a frame in this photo cluster and a couple frames in this one. I'm going to cut this frame in two and use both halves of it. And I'll build the cluster on top. Okay, I'm gonna put these aside and I think that's all the distressing. I, I do want to distress the holly jolly. 
I'm not quite sure that I'm gonna use it, but if I do, it'll be ready. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to do the mixed media part. And this is the most magical stuff in the world. It's Infusions Colored Stains, and it's by a company called Paper Artsy from the UK. I got it in my Mind the Scrap December kit, and it's called Slate Blue. It's kind of, a, instead of spelling it Slate, S-L-A-T-E, they spell it like a sleigh because it's a, a Christmassy kind of thing. And I honestly failed at first to see what was going to be Christmassy about it. And I actually, you'll see in a minute what, what I saw yesterday when I used it. Um, it's just, it's a powdered pigment similar to what, if you've ever used, um, Color Burst, uh, Ken, uh, Ken Oliver's Color Bursts, it's like that, and, but it's in a, a color that I pr might not have chosen for myself. I'm going to very lightly sprinkle it on here. And then I'll spritz with water and then we'll kind of add more as we see fit. And I don't want to get a lot. I have a kind of a tool that actually this is a pencil that's going to loosen that up. I may, I'm used to using these in something of a, like a little squeeze bottle. And I'll put a little bit over in here. Okay, here we go. Here's the, here's the magic. Okay, I don't know if you can see, but there's the kind of dark night sky looking blue there, which actually is taking on a little bit of a greenish color on the gold cardstock. I'm running the drips the wrong way, but that's, that's okay. I didn't want these to run too much. I'll run them this way, and that's, I, I'm, I'm thinking that wherever the drips want to go, I'm gonna be okay with that. Let me get some paper towel here to kind of catch the drops on my mat. I'm going to, right now, say that I've gotten the effects I wanted to get. And though I don't usually do this to mixed media projects, I found when I experimented yesterday, it actually did very nicely. So I'm gonna roll this over, and it does take up some of the, the pigment, but we're gonna kind of work with that. Um, and and I'll, I'm just gonna kinda leave it like this, and then we'll see, I'll probably use some splatters uh, later on to add to it and I can use any number of different colors of those. Okay, so here I'm going to go ahead and glue this tree on and that's going to help me determine where those two strips are. Now this, um, this paper is uh, treated with a a shiny finish and it makes it curl up so I really had to get lots of adhesive on it. It looks like right in through here might be a good place for my photo cluster. So I'll place this here on the very edge because it, because it was cut from the edge of the other paper. Okay, I'm going to put some foam behind this photo, making sure I'm not getting the photo on my mixed media. OK. 
Okay. I'm trusting that I haven't gotten any on my, gotten it on my mixed media. I'm gonna go ahead and, well, actually, I'm putting the adhesive on, but I'm not gonna put those down yet because I haven't put these down. Let me place these like so. By the time we start grouping things by, by and building clusters, the placement of these won't be as important, but I do want the difference in height. And I wanna put this one up higher because I like this um, kind of sploosh <laughs> down here. And let's do that. Okay, that seems to work for me. Now that means that my cluster up here shouldn't extend as far as, as I'd cut it. So I'm going to, actually, let me cut an angle off of it similar to what we have going down there. Is that short enough? That looks like it could work. There we go. Picking up some of the, um, I, of course I knew that, that when I dried it with the paper towel that wasn't going to be enough to like really dry it. And you can see it's beginning to curl a little bit, which I also expected. But when I'm done with this, I'm going to hit it with a, uh, a heat gun on the back. And when you do that, it tends to straighten out the, um, the curling. Okay, I'm gonna do this here. Let me raise this and kind of let it overlap that way. I like that. Okay, so that kind of tucks it further over this way. Make sure that's straight. My eyes deceive me sometimes when there are other elements and when I line up with some, in this case I'm trying to line this up with the side, the uh, in, edge of the page. Okay, so I'm going to press that down. That should glue the foam to the background. Okay, now here I'm going to build this cluster by just inserting this um, this frame as my as my foundation I'm going to use this holly jolly here and Let me, um, I may have to go back, because it's chipboard, I may have to go back and, um, and do um, what I'm gonna fussy cut this little tree. it kind of be part of that cluster. I'm not make, taking great pains to follow the exact contour of the tree. Um, mainly because the contours are kind of blurred. And when you do that and you get messed up. I, I could either follow the contours of the image itself or of the shadows of the image. I'm gonna go ahead and 
and cut that out all the way and then go back in. It's a little easier to manage that way. And in some cases, you've got some blue streaks that are coming off of it. In some cases, you've got some white and, and it's meant to look like there's some mixed media in the background here, like it's kind of a collage tree. So I'm gonna do that and maybe kind of tuck this under there. Okay, I like that. And then I'll incorporate that bow and get some liquid glue. I'm losing um, w with an image this big instead of the hearts that are shown in the original. I'm losing a bit of the um, of the look of the frame, and that's okay. I'm kind of okay with that. I'm gonna let the rest of the tree kind of curl up if it wants to, and I'm gonna kind of stick this bow right here at the juncture of the chipboard holly jolly circle and the tree trunk. I've got something sticking to that. I may have to go back. Okay, there we go. Just a little piece of stuff. Okay, this frame I will put under here and I'm gonna use a little liquid glue there. And I'm going to let that kind of be the part of the basis for my title, which is this um, Bramble Fox perspective that says gather. And it was um, kind of the event was Katie's first Christmas and it was the first Christmas where um, my son and his family came to stay with us at Christmas. And we hadn't uh, necessarily thought about what we do when the family gathered at our um, one bedroom downtown loft <laughs> in Houston on Main Street. And it was kind of humorous. Um, fortunately, we had a couch that was big enough for everyone to sleep on. It was an L shape and uh, it, it worked out there, but we knew that wasn't gonna last forever. I have some little, oh, okay, let me, there's another part of this. Right up here, there appears to be a, a label, and I have this label, which, on which I can write the, um, the date and place, and so I like that, but I kind of wanted to add this little piece of chipboard only. I'm not really sure how it can, how it's gonna work in. Yeah, that works because the photo is propped up on foam and I can insert this underneath it. Okay, that works. And then I thought I'd add this red star as a kind of a trio of things with red <laughs> in them. Um, I've got this part right here that doesn't, could I use that? The, um, the title cluster didn't really, uh, uh, the, this is where the tree ran into the snowman. I'm not sure how to put that. And, um, and so when I cut it, I thought, well, I'll just put some sort of embellishment there. And this embellishment that I 
pulled for that purpose isn't the right size. So I'm going to, I'm gonna cut one of these little hearts from this cut file. I'll cut one from the middle so that I can get the full side on it. And I'm going to do this. And I'm going to let it... Uh, I'll decide whether or not I want to back it. I'm, I'm thinking I may not. I'd like to get away without backing it. So let me get the top to my glue. I'm not seeing it. Um, ah, here it is. Okay. Um, I'll need some there. Let's see. I could do this. I think it's going to need a backing. So I'll go hunt for something to back it with. And it may very likely be, um, eh, maybe, maybe something from this larger tree. And but that might be confusing putting it over there. So I may go, oh, I know what. This, um, this newsprint, that's what I'll do. It's, it's, if I turn it at exactly the right angle, I can get some newsprint there. Okay, I will do that off camera. In the meantime, I'm, I submit this as my week's work for Mixed Media Frenzy. And I, I kind of, I didn't go overboard with different techniques on the mixed media because I actually kind of like this. I, therefore, it's kind of left some, um, and, and drying it kind of left some, some spots. I'm not able to open the gold, so let's go with this guy. Um, I'm going to kind of protect those things with this. And I'll do some splatters there so that that Part doesn't look so empty. Oops, there's a, a big splatter. And that's an accident that actually is a kind of a happy accident. I wouldn't mind some larger spots on there. So let's do that. And I'm going to do the same down here and some right here. And that's kind of wet enough that it might actually drip. Or not. Yeah, there it is. It's dripping a little bit. Okay, so that's good. And that is um, Mr. Huey's silver. And it's it's this kind of translucent black or charcoal -y color if you don't shake it up. And sometimes it's fun not to shake it up. I have this Heidi Swat tinsel color, which is similar but it leaves a little bit more metallic kind of shine and has some of that blue in it. So I kind of had it designated for use. And here, I'm going to try to get it on that blue paper. I got some on the photo, which is okay, the photo frame. It'll all just look kind of, okay, there's a, a 
flourish. And you can already see You can already see the metallic finish kind of rising up to the top and looking very different from the Mr. Huey's silver. So you can, you can, you can see it really well there. Okay, so now I'm gonna call it finished. I'm gonna go back this um, heart cut file, mount it on here, I'll take a photo and, and that's what you'll see when I post it on um, Mixed Media Frenzy Friday. <laughs> so thanks for watching. I really do appreciate all of your uh, comments and, and love. And I hope this one was better placed in the frame of the camera. Don't have my new equipment yet. It, uh, it hasn't even been shipped yet. So we'll see how long that takes. Uh, but I did see something yesterday that is, uh, that's what I ordered. I ordered it online and um, I, I, without touching and feeling and on equipment like that, I kind of like to touch and feel. So uh, what I saw yesterday, I really like. So again, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.